When I was a little boy, I used to wet the bed. And when I say wet the bed, I mean I used to wet the bed. I kind of think that, that might have been my spiritual gift. I mean, that's how much I wet the bed. It was all the time. And my mother could not figure out what exactly to do to kind of stop my bed wetting. She would just even ask me, Corey, why do you, you know, why do you keep wetting the bed? And I said, well, that, that's what I do. I mean, I'm a, I'm a bedwetter, mama. And so what she would try to do to try to keep me from wetting the bed was she would limit when I could drink something. And so after seven or eight o'clock, I was no longer allowed to drink anything. Well, a couple problems with that. One, I would be thirsty, but two, I had an older brother who was kind of a jerk. And so when we were getting ready for bed, we would go to brush our teeth and he would be able to drink something and he would kind of tease me. He would, get, he would intentionally ask for a glass of water or something and then drink it in front of me and tease me. That used to bother me so much. I couldn't wait to get older and beat him up, but that's a separate point. But while I was sitting there watching him drink and enjoy the water, I naturally wanted water, even if I wasn't thirsty. Him, watching him drink it made me want it even more. But I also wanted to drink as well. I mean, it, it probably been a while and I, I wanted to have something to wet my whistle before I went to bed. Well, I couldn't drink anything and in our house, if you turn the water on, you could hear the water move through the pipes. And so I couldn't drink, I couldn't sneak and drink anything or else my mother would hear it and I'd get in trouble. So imagine this, here I am in the bathroom wanting to drink, having this deep desire to drink something because I'm thirsty, but I couldn't turn the water on. And so what's a boy to do? Well, there is some water in the bathroom and it's not water that's flowing and I don't have to turn the faucet on to get this water and so my mother wouldn't hear. Yeah, that toilet right there. Nice cold water waiting for me, just, just calling my name out. And I'm a six, seven year old boy and so I did what any not too bright <laughs> seven year old would do and I would bend down and drink out of the toilet. That's just how desperate I was just to get some water. I wanted what I wanted. I wanted some water. And I didn't care that I would have to humble myself and bend over in a demeaning fashion to drink this water. I didn't even think that it was all, all that humbling or humiliating. I didn't think it was that bad. Now, in hindsight, I look, I look at it and I see that that wasn't that's not a, a good thing to do. But here's the lesson. I was so thirsty and wanted it. I was willing to do whatever it took to get a drink of water. Well, that reminds me of the, of the psalmist in, in Psalm 42 where he says, as the deer pants for water, so my soul longs or desires after you. And that really should be kind of the heart of a Christian. You want him so much. It doesn't matter what it is you're going through, what you have to do to get to him. You are so desiring and so thirsty of him that if it meant getting on your knees and humbling yourself and bending over just to get a drink like the deer or like the seven-year-old me drinking out of the toilet. I'm not saying you know, advocating do something like that, but I'm using it as an illustration to show how desperate and how hungry we ought to be for him so that nothing should stand in our way. And if that means bending over uh, and, 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 and humbling ourselves just to get closer to him, well, we ought to do that. There should be something in our heart that should compel us to want to get closer to him. And I don't care who's looking or who's watching. And yeah, my brother used to make fun of me because I was doing that, but I was getting what I wanted. I was getting, uh, I, I was satisfying my thirst. And just like there's a thirst in my soul for him, I'm going to do whatever it takes to satisfy that thirst in him. Not a thirst for sin, don't do that, but a thirst for Christ. And if it means I have to get on my knees, I don't care how I look or appear to others, uh, as long as my soul can be refreshed, as long as my spirit can be close to you, Lord. That's what I want. I hope that's what you want. And so, 
Yeah, it's a goofy little uh, analogy. It's a true analogy, but it's a goofy analogy. But as the deer pants for the water, your soul ought to also long for him.